start to feel bad. And this is really what it's all about. It's just nothing more than a craving. Now, if we look at, at, at this picture, it's a simple picture to, to understand. It, if we took a cocaine addict, or methamphetamine, or any addict, but in this particular picture we use cocaine addict, a coconut. And what we got in here is we got, we got two uh, shots of this uh, cocaine addict's brain. And the cocaine addict sitting in treatment, and in the first shot over here on the left, what we see is this cocaine addict's brain when he's watching a nature video, maybe watching Bambi or something like that. What we see is nothing much is happening in his brain. But all of a sudden, we switch videos and we show them a cocaine video, or this could be a heroin video, or a meth video, or an alcohol video, or a marijuana video, it doesn't make any difference. And all of a sudden, there's an area that lights up in his brain. It, it's got a fancy name, it's called the amygdala. But this is that area in the brain that remembers. This is the area that remembers. All of a sudden, it starts to light up, and it's connected to other parts of your brain, uh, and, and you're starting to get that feeling, you know, and you're starting to think about it and remember it. You actually start to get the body sensation that goes with the craving, and that's how it all happens. This part of your brain has learned. It's learned that when I'm with this person or I'm in this situation, there's a high probability that I'm going to use, so my brain is already off and running before I even put the drug in my body. I know that sometimes I've worked with, with people in the past who would just steal a set of works and just sit and, and just stick a needle in their arm and just milk blood. No drug at all. But they did it because they got off on it. They got off on no, dro no drug, just the needle itself. You know, it's almost like they were addicted to the needle as much as they were the drug sometimes. And so as we look at this, this is that part of the brain. And, and when you, we, you think about craving, just think there's a little area up there that remembers. It knows where you've been. Okay, it knows who you've been with, it knows what you've done, and any time you go out and you get around those things, it's going to light up, and it's going to, it's going to uh, cause you to have a craving. So one of the simple things we can start to think about is, is, is what causes cravings, what, and some of these may surprise you a little bit. What are the things that, that are most common in terms of causing cravings? Well, the first thing we know, people, places, and things. We talk about that being around the old, the old crowd, old places, doing the old things. Secondly, uh, and probably 1A on this, we could put is anger. Most alcoholics and addicts, right before they relapse, are angry. If recovery is going to be this crappy, I might as well be loaded. And it's usually angry intent or feeling that goes along with it. And then we start to look at other feelings like boredom or reward or loneliness or fear or all of these different things. And in the past, when you, know, when you felt down, or, you, you know, or let's say you had a breakup of a relationship and you were feeling really down, one thing you could always turn to was a bottle, right? You could turn to a drug and it'd make that feeling go away. So we learned that too. We learned that we could medicate ourselves, and we can do it, and, and it works really, really fast. And that was one of the advantages of a drug. Within minutes, your feelings have changed. If you had bad feelings you didn't like, you could make them, you could make them different. You could change them. You could feel good. Recovery is not like that. You know, you, you can't go hide there. You know, you, you got to face it and deal with it. Now, when we start to look at some of the other things that are very commonly associated with relapse, actually positive feeling states. For many people who are, are addicts, especially those of us who come from alcoholic homes or homes where there may have been abuse or neglect or other things, sometimes when we experience good feelings, it causes problems for us. And it's kind of a, 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 kind of a crazy thing to think about because you'd think when you felt good feelings that that'd be a good thing. But for some of us, good feelings, we almost have the sense that, well, well we're not worth this or, or we shouldn't be feeling this way or, or there's something wrong, you know, when we have good feelings. So part of recovery is, is learning to appreciate the good feelings, you know, and that's something that, that uh, you have to kind of go within yourself. And we'll talk about that later on, how to get to that point. Uh, physical pain. For some people, uh, you know, I have, for example, rheumatoid arthritis. And it's very difficult for me sometimes because it really hurts. But I know that if I start taking pain pills, uh, you know, I, I could get back to the same old way of thinking after 32 years would take me no time at all. 
I mean, I, I'm one of these people, when I used to go to the dentist, I used to, you know, uh, do whatever I could to make sure they gave me some uh, painkillers, you know. And as soon as I took a painkiller, man, all, the first thing I'm thinking about is how am I going to get some more? So, you know, these are things that we have to be very careful about. So mood-altering mood substances in, in general, Valium, for example, is another one, having a lot of cash in our pockets. You know, if we're playing the game, if we, if we were pocket dealers, if we were out there dealing out of our pocket and we were uh, playing a cash game, we were accustomed to carrying a lot of cash around with us. And uh, when you, you know, you have cash in your pocket, that old feeling may come back. You know, I've got a lot of dope. My, I can spend a little bit on this and, and, and not, uh, not uh, create a problem at all. Complacency. And what that means is, is that you're doing certain things that are working for you right now. You know, and as long as you keep doing the things that are working, you, the odds are in your favor that you could do all right. But if you start slacking off, you know, and you don't do the things that you, if you were doing that works, you enhance the chance of relapse. Uh, we know that things, for example, like insomnia and sexual functioning. You know, I, I have uh, groups of uh, especially stimulant addicts, for example, who they were always talking about, uh, about cocaine and methamphetamine and sex and stuff like this and how, you know, how they could have an erection for a long, long time. And, and uh, I just laugh at them because uh, if you do a lot of cocaine methamphetamine, your penis is about this big, you know, <laughs> and you can't do a thing with it. So, you know, when you start to look, it, it, uh, these, these things uh, can end up uh, being problems in recovery. Some of us got into pornography. We like pornography when we're high. Uh, if you go out and you start looking at, uh, you know, at, at the X-rated movies and you start looking at the Playboys and the penthouses, it's going to start to make you think again about, you know, how did I used to do this? And it was a lot better when I was doing it with, uh, with the drug or with alcohol or whatever. So a lot of these things we have to think about because if we don't think about them, prepare for them, we're going to run right into them and they'll run over us. Now, i give you a simple example of, of just thinking about cravings. Cravings are very normal. There's nothing abnormal about it. All of us have them. I had cravings 15 years in recovery, um, and, and, and these things are going to happen. Um, but they'll go away. If you give them a little bit of time, they'll go away. The worst thing in the world you can do is use because it's going to make that next craving worse. Now, let's look at, at more practical things that we can do to, to prepare ourselves because uh, we want to be proactive here. We want to talk about what we can do to kind of help ourselves stay straight. 